In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, my friend. It's wonderful to be able to be with you here in Jerusalem or next to Jerusalem in Haradar. And we had, I wanted to tell you, we had some amazing snow here. And this was the snow of the century. We had one meter, Eliezer, in, yes. in a, our place here. So I just wanted to tell you that because, you know, it's warm in Israel, but sometimes it's cold and it's very cold. So this is wonderful. We're very happy to welcome you. And today I have Eliezer Ben Yehuda again. Eliezer, thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. You know, whenever I'm in Jerusalem, I like to come here and talk to you. I know. It's wonderful. Eliezer lives in uh, Florida. But as you say, his real home is when he comes here in Jerusalem. So we always try to see each other and, and have a special meeting and a special teaching for you about the Torah, the beautiful uh, treasures that we can find in the Bible. So we find some new ones and we want just to share with you today. We will speak about Adam, which is man. And we will do also another program later on about Ish and Isha, which is the, the man and the woman or husband and wife. So this will be very interesting. So Eliezer, is your time now. Thank you for coming. My pleasure, my pleasure. And uh, you know, you were saying that I live in Florida, but I, my real home is here. I like to tell people that I reside in Florida mm -hmm. and that when I get up in the morning in Jerusalem and I go to work, unfortunately, it takes me 48 hours to get to my job in the United States and then I can't go back home in the evening, mm -hmm. you see, and so I have to reside there, you see, mm -hmm. and then when I finish working mm -hmm. for a period of time, I go home to Jerusalem. But Jerusalem, for me, is more home than it is for most Jews. Mm -hmm. For most Jews, it's the eternal city, and it's the root of Jewish people. Mm -hmm. For me, I was born in Jerusalem. So for me, it really is my home base. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always say to my Jewish friends, it's also your home base. And it's time you came home. You don't have to stay at home. You can go back to where you reside, but you need to see your home. Mm -hmm. and it's very interesting that this particular time, I have with me a friend who came for the first time in his life. Mm -hmm. And he spent a lot of years of his life away from home. And when he came here, he has been awestruck by everything that he has seen. And he says, you know, I never realized that it would be like this. I had an entirely different idea of what it is going to be like. Yeah. But now that he has seen it, he says, I have to come back. And I have to, I have to really get to know the place because it's gotten under my skin. And I think you feel the same way. And, you know, I always fe felt, and I've made it my ministry, to work with what we call Bible-believing people, mm -hmm. you see? And if they are Bible-believing people, whether they're Christian or whether they're Jews, they have the same roots. And they're all blessed by mm -hmm. the seed of Abraham and by the teachings of Moses and by the teaching of Jesus the Jew. Mm -hmm. So there it is. This is what we look at. Now, when we talk about what we, in, uh, uh, in the Jewish people, we call this our scriptures, mm -hmm. Tanakh, mm -hmm. and uh, in Christianity it's called the Old Testament, uh, one has to realize that the source is written in Hebrew and that there is no such thing as a perfect translation. Every translation is a compromise. I think that one time when I was here and we were talking about mm -hmm. the land, remember? 
I told you about an experience that I had when I went to the Grand Canyon. I saw a picture, which was a mural, mm -hmm. and it was beautiful. You know, it was a whole big wall, and it showed the Grand Canyon. And I was impressed by it. And then one day, I went to the real thing, and guess what? The picture was nothing like mm. the original Grand Canyon. The same is true for the Hebrew Scriptures. Mm -hmm. Unless you learn the Hebrew, unless, you know, ministers, when they study for the ministry, they need to have a Hebrew-speaking professor at their seminary who can teach them right. their Old Testament mm -hmm. from the Hebrew sources. And then they're going to learn something which is three-dimensional mm -hmm. or maybe even more than three-dimensional. After all, this is the words of the eternal God. We are three-dimensional, mm -hmm. but God is multi-dimensional. And so is his book. Mm -hmm. We believe, you know, there's Jewish mysticism. Mm -hmm. And we don't believe in making everything mysticism. Mm -hmm. You know, some people think that they have to study this mysticism. And they go overboard in it, you know. And it almost becomes like reading tea leaves or something like that, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not what Jewish mysticism is all about. But what we teach is that our mysticism tries to enter into a fourth dimension, mm -hmm. which is called the mysterious, mm -hmm. you see. So one of the things that we say is, you know, we say that God is without time. He's outside of mm -hmm. time. He is, you know, he's all powerful. He's all this, he's all that, he's all knowing. And he is all time. Mm -hmm. God has been since before the beginning. There is no beginning to God. And of course, there is no end to God. Our experience is, you know, 70 years, if we're lucky, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years. And then we pass away. So we try to imagine what it was like in the days of our grandfathers or great-grandfathers or five generations back or ten generations back. But everything we know is two-dimensional because we read it in a book or whatever have mm -hmm. you. You see, in the eyes of God, there is no time. So a split second, you know, like a blink of an eye ago, he said, let there be light. A blink of an eye ago, there was nothing. And here we are today. All of this is time. And then we talk of end times. But for God, there is no such thing. Right. You see? And the only reason we think of end times is because we end. Mm -hmm. So we say, oh, you know, we end. One of these days, there's going to be an end time. But in the clock of God, mm -hmm. there is no end time. Mm -hmm. There is just the future, the present, and the past, in this order. That is why God, mm -hmm. when he told us what his name is, told us that the name is Eheye and not I am Ani Anochi. You see? Mm -hmm. I am is, you see, in the present. I am that I am. Mm -hmm. But actually in the scriptures, in the Hebrew scriptures, it says, Eheye asher eheye. I shall be that I shall be. You see? Mm -hmm. So there it is. That's the thing. You see? Now, leaving God for a minute while he's always there for us, mm -hmm. we want to talk a little bit about man. And there are many stories in Judaism, uh, legends, folk tales, whatever you want to call them, about the creation of man. And <laughs> I had a rabbi once who said that God made one mistake. He says, you know, please don't think that I'm sacrilegious. 
But if God would have asked me, I would have told him not to make man. Because man is duplicious. And in the Hebrew, it's very interesting that when it talks about the actual making of a man, mm -hmm. you see, it uses two yuds. You see? Vayitzer, and he created. Mm -hmm. And it says, Vayitzer is vav yud yud tzadi resh. And everywhere else in the scriptures, and they use the word, and he created many times after it, all of them are written with only one yud. So why are there two yuds? It says one of the reasons is to tell us that the, uh, you know, if you just look at the three last words, yud, tzadi, resh, it means yetzer. Mm -hmm. And yetzer is an inclination. So we have yetzer tov, which is the right, incl a good inclination, and we have yetzer ra, which is the evil inclination. Mm -hmm. And to tell us that man was born with both of them, they put two yuds. You see, one is for the first uh, uh, yetzer, and the second one is for the second yetzer. To tell you that man is capable of good choices and of bad choices. Mm -hmm. You see, and in the scriptures, of course, in the Hebrew scriptures, you know, there are a number of times where Moses tells the children of Israel, Behold, the Lord has given to you a good teaching. He has put before you the good and the bad, life and death. Therefore, choose life. You see? But choose life also means choose good. You see? Because if you do what is good, then you are creating one layer in the eternal mountain which is built with the deeds of righteous people. And the right and the evil deeds of bad people take four generations to scrape off, you see, and to do away and to come back to the good life. Which is what he said also, like he will he will remember Right. Doing doing kindness to a thousand generation of they who respect him and love him and follow his teachings and not forgetting and not forgiving the evil for three or four generations. You know, why do you forget why do you forget and forgive them after four generations? It's not that he forgets and forgives, it's that it's erased. It disappears by itself. You know, it's like it's like the dust, uh, the 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 uh, uh, ashes from a fire. Mm -hmm. You see, dust is good, it's earth, mm -hmm. but ashes is from a fire, and ashes really don't serve much of a purpose. Mm -hmm. Even though, even ashes can nourish the earth, you mm -hmm. see, the remains of mm -hmm. evil also nourishes the earth. Mm -hmm. And how is that possible? I mean, it was evil, it, it got mm -hmm. burnt off. And the answer is, by its burning and by its turning to ash, it gives us a warning, you see. And you know that archaeologists, when they dig up and they find ashes, they know that they have reached a time of crisis, you know. Like in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. it's the time when the Romans burnt the temple. Uh, in, in Pompeii, mm -hmm. you know, it's where the mountain erupted and buried the city. You see, so there are different kinds of ways in which the ashes can determine where the bad happened. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's human folly and human evilness. And sometimes it's what happens in nature, which is really not evil, but it's only the way of the earth. Mm -hmm. The way of the earth is that we have a particular time allotted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God said, let us make man in our image. And in, in the Hebrew, the term for man that is spoken of there mm -hmm. is Adam. Well, it's not Adam. Adam is the name of the man, mm -hmm. but he was an Adam. See, the accent 
is different. Adam is the name. And Adam is man. Let us make man. And by the way, again, I must remind you and remind our listeners that when we speak in Hebrew in the male form, it's not chauvinism. It is also, it, it's the male form, and it's also the unknown gender. So let us make man. Later on, when he makes him, it says, male and female created he them. Mm -hmm. You see? So it's not, he didn't just create man. He created male and female. And then we have the second story, which is a parable, which tells us, you know, it tries to tell us the purpose of man upon this earth. Mm -hmm. Then he says, oh, yeah, there was only a man, and he was so lonely, you know, that he was, he had no purpose. Mm -hmm. And so God creates the woman, Chava, Eve, mm -hmm. to be Ezel Kenegdo, to be a help against him. Kenegdo actually means against him. So it's not a help to him. It's not that she is his helpmate, mm -hmm. but rather that she is going to be his contra. Mm -hmm. You see, you need, you know, you need something that is going to push you and work with you in order to form something new. Mm -hmm. And that is why the term in the Hebrew Scriptures is he created the woman to be a help in opposition to him, mm -hmm. you see? And together, they merge and they make one. Mm -hmm. So they are more themselves together. Yes, they're more yeah. than themselves. And at the end of the year, oh, oh sorry, at the end of their years, mm -hmm. they are more. Yes, yeah. absolutely. When it's a good marriage. Yes, yes. It's the purpose. And, and, and it says in the scriptures, mm -hmm. after it talks about the creation of the woman, and, and, and Adam, the first man, now by name, Adam, says, I shall call her Eve because she is a bone of my bone and a flesh of my flesh. You see? And then there's a little sermon there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a verse that kind of concludes the whole story, and it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be as one. Because that is the way it's meant to be. We're not supposed to be celibate. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to live alone. We're supposed to work together. Mm -hmm. You see, and one supports the other. You see, and so you know what is this Adam? Mm -hmm. You know why do we call him Adam, and why do we call the human? Why does God say, "Now say Adam"? Let us make an Adam, you see? And the simple explanation is that he is speaking about um, something that was made out of clay. Mm -hmm. You know, man was made out of clay. And the best clay is the red clay. So mm -hmm. he made the man out of red clay, mm -hmm. and therefore, there he was. Mm -hmm. There is a second interpretation that says that the, the thing that makes man alive mm -hmm. is, of course, the essence of life. It is the blood. Mm -hmm. In all living things, the essence is the blood. And the blood is called dam. Mm -hmm. You see, so Adam is a vessel of dam, which is to which is added the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. He says, "Nase Adam, bedmutenu uvetsalmenu." We will make him in our fashion, in our uh, image. Mm -hmm. You see. Now, on the other hand, Judaism teaches that there is no such thing as an image of God. Mm -hmm. You see. So how can you make man in your image when there is no image? Well, you know, if there was an image and you look at man, then the question is, am I the image of God or are you the image of God? Mm -hmm. Is it your child? Is it an uh, African child? 
Is it a uh, Eskimo child? You know, who looks like God? Mm -hmm. And of course, the answer is everybody does. So it's not the actual visage, mm -hmm. but rather it is the spark of the divine that is in us. Mm -hmm. You see? And the spark of the divine is maintained through the blood. And when the children of Israel uh, were just started, they decided that they're going to have a um, offering of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And those sacrifices were uh, called uh, korbanot, mm -hmm. which came from the word lekarev, to bring you closer to God. And many times the animal that was sacrificed mm -hmm. was actually eaten by the people. Mm -hmm. So why is it, you know, how is it a sacrifice? And the answer is the blood. The blood of the animal that was sacrificed mm -hmm. was uh, shed on the altar. You see, the dam mm -hmm. was shed on the altar. Mm -hmm. And that blood was truly the sacrifice because with the blood mm -hmm. life comes to an end and you have given up a life and that is how you bring yourself closer to God you make a sacrifice you make an offering that something that is there and something that has the potential for a long life mm -hmm. is going to be curtailed with the dumb. And so we, as Bnei Adam, the sons of man, which mm -hmm. means human beings, you see, we have this offering of sacrifices. Now, is it necessary to do that? In Judaism, we say, no, it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. One might say that every prophet of Judaism suggested that God doesn't find pleasure in the smell of burning flesh. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Unless you put spices on it, even barbecue doesn't smell very good. But God wants people to live by his law. Mm -hmm. And that is where the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Do you have just the time to say, so I was <laughs> a nurse before, and I like the, um, the chromosome with the name of Adam, you know, the number? Well, when we come to talk about the numbers, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about, um, we're talking about what is called numerology. And numerology is, again, part of Jewish mysticism. Mm -hmm. And in Jewish mysticism, as you and I have discussed before, there are numbers that are very significant numbers. Mm -hmm. And the Hebrew alphabet has numbers, and these num numbers can be added and reduced to the lowest number possible. So if you come up with something that, let's say, is 123, mm -hmm. so you say 1, 2, and 3 will be 6. Mm -hmm. you see. And uh, the word Adam is, Aleph is 1, Dalet is 4, and Mem is 40. Mm -hmm. So we have 4, 4, and 1. Mm -hmm. 40 is one. just 4. Mm -hmm. It makes the number 9. The number nine is the product of three times three. In other words, the square root of nine is three. And, and according to mm -hmm. the Hebrew tradition, based on Moses meeting God and challenging him, who shall I say sent me? In all the translations, you read, God answering and saying, I am that I am. But actually, that's not what he says. He says, I will be what I will be. 
and I will be that I will be is Aleph, Hey, Yud, Hey. Aleph is one, Hey is five, Yud is ten, and Hey is five. So five and ten is fifteen, and another five is twenty, mm -hmm. and one, twenty-one. Twenty-one makes three. Two plus one is three. Mm -hmm. You see? So three is the sums, the reduced sum mm -hmm. of the name of God, mm -hmm. quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And Adam is the multiplication mm -hmm. of three by itself. It's that God says, I will make a man in my image. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eliezer. We, you see, we have, when we start to speak about God and man and who we are in the Torah, we need eternity. But obviously, we had only 28 minutes. So we see you next, year, uh, next week. And it's been wonderful to be with you, Eliezer. Thank you for coming and take the time to explain to us, you know, the depth of what we have in the Bible. And to you, my dear friends, shalom, shalom. And don't forget, we are living in the last days. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter. Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In the Last Days.